Hey little guys, it's Delta Trooper Niner here with a tutorial on how to set up a Minecraft bucket server. Now I'm just gonna be showing you how to set up the bucket server. I'm not gonna be adding any plugins or anything, uh, but if you'd like me to do a tutorial on how to install a specific bucket plugin, then you can leave that in the comments below or you can send me a personal message. So let's get on with the tutorial. And the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have the latest version of Java uh, if you have Java 6 and you are like set on Java 6, then you want to make sure you have the latest version of Java 6. But I do suggest that you get Java 7, and the link to that will be in the description so you can download it. Now, at the page, you want to click the JRE download here. So, download. And then you want to select the accept license agreement, and then select your version of whatever operating system you're using. Uh, now this is a tutorial for Windows, so you want to download the either Windows 64-bit one if you have a 64-bit system, or a Windows times 86, which is a 32-bit system, and online or offline, it doesn't matter. It's just, it'll if you do the online one, it'll download it, and then it'll download it a different thing, so um, just doesn't really matter. Just uh, make sure you get the right 64-bit or 32-bit one and uh, yeah that's that now you just want to download it and install it now that's just like any other installer so I'm not gonna show you that uh, but next thing you want to do is you want to go to bucket.org and you can see here bucket.org and on the right it says recommended builds and you want to select give me a second there you want to select the newest one which if you see I roll over these and the date changes you want to select this top one and then you can either click this or this one but it changes for everyone uh, so make sure it, make sure it says or make sure it's selected on this top one so you're getting the newest recommended build of craft bucket and once you've downloaded that I suggest you download it onto your desktop or somewhere that's easy to get to and the next thing is I'm gonna go on my desktop here and you can see I have the file as well as two other files which I did not download you don't get those with the download um, I actually made them so the first thing is you want to create a new folder so new folder and just name it bucket server or minecraft server uh, or minecraft bucket server however advanced you want to get with that and you want to drag the craft bucket and it may say a few other things you want to uh, the craft bucket jar into there into the bucket server folder and you'll see I have the run and run text. Now this is uh, just something I have to go over in a minute, but I will leave a download to the run.bat. Now what the run.bat is, is it's a start, it starts the server so you don't open the jar. Uh, it's just, it opens the command prompt and that is how you can type in commands and things. So the thing that you're gonna wanna change or you may need to change is this part right here actually this part this entire line now it depends on your computer and how everything's set up with the drives and all that now mine is probably a bit different than everyone else's because I changed the environment variable so that the program files is on my M drive which is a solid state drive so I need to put and the uh, server is on the D drive sorry so I need to put the or make it go to the D drive because that's where Java is installed but it's kind of confusing because Java is installed there but then my program files is set to go to a different drive so I have to put this in the exact path to Java 7 and I have four I mean I have eight gigabytes of RAM and I'm using four gigs because I do usually play when I have my server on so that's just kind of why I did that but uh, of course you can either I suggest you don't use all of it but you can probably use half or three quarters of it would be good if say you have uh, six maybe you want to use four or if you have 16 use eight now if you have a lot and you're not hosting it for a lot of people I would not use all your RAM because it's kind of pointless um, so yeah that's that now let me go into this run text that I have and this will be in the description so you can uh, look at this and figure out which one is right for you. This first one here, you'll see it says percent program files percent. And that's because most people, their default program files drive, or uh, 
excuse me, location is where their envir vari environment variable is set. Jeez. And this right here, it says present uh, percent program files percent, which means it's going to go to the default program files folder. So that will work for most people. If you only have one drive, that'll definitely work for you. And then it goes to Java and JRE6. So this is for JRE6. And if you have a 32 or 64 bit machine, so if you have a 32 bit machine and you are you're installing 32 bit Java, then this will be right. But say you install 32 bit Java on a 64 bit machine, then you're going to need to use this. Now, this is program files time 86, and that is 32 bit. So you're going to need to use this one, and it's the same thing here. It's just that this path right here is different. It's really confusing, but hopefully you'll understand. If not, you can leave uh, comments below or send me a personal message if you need help. But right here, so it's 32-bit. It's in the 32-bit program files folder, and that's where Java is. It's kind of screwy, but <laughs> yep, that's what that is. Now the RAM, if you have a 32-bit machine, you cannot go over, I believe, a gigabyte, so 1024 megabytes. So just keep that in mind if you have a 32-bit machine, but I think most people have 64-bit machines now. Uh, they've been out, been out for a long time, so yeah, so uh, anyway, back to the tutorial. So if you have, um, I'll show you how to get to your RAM. So go to control panel and system security and system. So if you have eight gigabytes of RAM like me, you're gonna want to use four unless you have a 32-bit system. Uh, but say you have four, you might want to use two. Uh, so just check how much RAM you have. And if you'd like a gigabyte to megabyte converter, I'll leave the link in the description to one. Uh, so what you do is you just type in, okay, so I have, say I want four gigabytes to be used and it's 4,096 4, there. So that's just what you want to copy. And for some reason, my computer, I don't know if it's just my computer, but I have to put the same number in both the XMX and XMS, but usually you're supposed to put a number, a bigger number in this one and then in the XMX and a smaller number in the XMS. So that's just, you have to try out both. It's trial and error, basically, for this. And... As you can see, I have the one that I'm using. Uh, now, it also you could also use C program files. Uh, say you just want to make it easier and just go to exactly where it is instead of using this shortcut, then you can just C program files. Uh, now, if you go to your computer and go to where Java is installed, so I think it's in here, Java, Java 7, in here, and then go into bin, and then you can actually right click here and it'll give you the path and all you need to do is add slash java dot or backslash java dot exe on it at the end if you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself so I'm not gonna deal with that too much uh, because it's I kinda went over it and if you have any questions uh, specifically for you then you can leave those in the comments or send me a personal message as I said so then what you want to do is you can see I dragged the craft bucket jar in here and what you want to do is you want to drag the run.bat into the bucket server folder as well and let me just make sure that this is set so you have two options you can either rename the craft bucket dash whatever to cra just craft bucket or you can copy the name of this and in the run.bat change before the dot jar just change that so that it'll work um, just it'll be looking for the right file so let me run it and you'll see it'll open the command prompt and it will give you some errors the first time because it hasn't created the files yet and you can see it's creating the world and you have a lot more folders and files let me move this down here and give it a second there you go it's done so let me stop it there we go and you will see you have all these files and a few folders here now the world folders are where your world is kept and if you want to say you don't like the seed or the world at all or something uh, you can delete them 
if you want to keep the nether you can just keep the nether one but it's, you can delete them all if you'd like and just delete them and it'll create a new one when you start the server again now the thing that you want to be looking at in this folder is not the server text document but the server properties file uh, so make sure you don't open this up because this is just a log so it should look like this it should say Minecraft server properties and then the time that was last edited um, I believe or last used not sure <laughs> but this all these things are basically up to you you can just choose whether you'd like them to be on or not and I will leave a link to the wiki page uh, that has what the different things mean uh, definitions of some of the things and like difficulty what number means what difficulty uh, you want to probably use the 25566 uh, port default port because uh, that's just what Minecraft uses and it's easier because then you don't have to enter the port when you're trying to log on into the server uh, but that's if you can't use that port for some reason then obviously you can change that and the other thing server IP leaving this blank will just use your local IP uh, but if you want to type it in then it's usually 192.168 and then numbers after that. Now, if you'd like me to do a port forwarding tutorial, then you can, of course, ask me that in the comments or let, send me a personal message. Uh, but just ask me that, and I will go over that. But I'm just going to leave that blank because it's so much easier. And max build height, that's your choice. And whitelist, I will get to that in a second. Leaving it false will allow people, anyone that has the IP, to join the server. But having it true means that only people that you add to the whitelist will be able to join. And I'll get to the whitelist in a second. Now, spawn animals, that's your choice. Online mode, I would keep this as true because if you have a premium account and you only want premium accounts to be able to join, then keep that as true. Uh, but people, if you have it as false, people that haven't bought an account can join. And... Uh, PvP, that's your choice. Difficulty, that's your choice. Gamer, that's your choice. Now, Max Players, I will link you to a website. Uh, in, in the description, I will link you to a website that kind of calculates the uh, amount of people that you could hold on your server. And that uses your internet speed and your RAM, and it calculates that for you. And Spawn Monsters, that's your choice. Generate Structures, it's your choice. View Distance, your choice. And message of the day is also your choice alright so let's close that and I didn't I don't need to save it it's fine and what you want to do now is open up the ops folder and add your username so just add whatever your username is and maybe your friends want to be an op or you want your make your friends an op operator <laughs> then you can add their usernames to the list as well now the whitelist if you add names here that means that if the whitelist is true then those people that are on this list can join the server and everyone else cannot so just keep that in mind now you also have a plugins folder which is where all your plugins will go and there's some plugins that create additional folders and that just depends on what plugin you are installing and if you of course have a question on anything in this tutorial or if you want me to make a tutorial on port forwarding or how to install a specific bucket plugin, you can leave that in the comments below. And uh, that is about it. Hopefully that whole run.bat thing was not too confusing for you. It is a bit confusing, uh, but I will leave the code, uh, specific codes for different circumstances in the description below. Also, a like and a favorite would be greatly appreciated. And also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe for more daily content. Thanks for watching.